Hello, I'm the Reverend Tuck Bauerfein from Grace Episcopal Church in Lexington. I'm going to offer an order of service for noonday on this four, Thursday in the fourth week of Lent, uh, March 18th, 2021. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 119, verses 105 through 112. Your word is a lantern to my feet, and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Thanks be to God. And the ministry of reconciliation that we share with Christ uh, takes many and various forms. Over this last year, of course, we've all suffered uh, through this pandemic together and our common suffering has created a form of reconciliation, solidarity. Uh, we can understand what others are going through because we're going through the same thing. So one of the benefits of the pandemic has been the awakening of compassion and uh, the creativity that comes when we seek to find relief and suffering uh, from suffering. Uh, I remember all those people who helped make masks last summer uh, for children and teachers before they could return to school. And I remember the times when we've rung our church bells uh, around this city to encourage and honor healthcare workers and to honor and, uh, and offer consolation for those who have died. Um, the ministry of reconciliation uh, that Christ offers to us and invites us into also has called forth from us a new recognition of some of the privileges that some of us enjoy uh, and called us to find ways to 
use our positions of privilege uh, for the purpose of reconciliation. An example of that was the uh, gatherings on the streets of Lexington uh, in solidarity with those who are seeking racial equity following the murder of George Floyd last year. Um, we continue to work for uh, ways to use our positions of privilege to, uh, to help uh, to uh, encourage, uh, to support um, those who don't enjoy the same privileges we have. As a white man in America, a straight man in America, uh, I enjoy some privileges by uh, virtue of who I am. Uh, and part of the work that Christ enjoins upon us is to uh, use those privileges not for taking advantage of others, uh, but for uh, supporting and empowering those who don't share our privileges. One of the privileges that I've come to be more aware of since moving to Lexington is the privilege of my heritage. Uh, I was born in Cleveland, Ohio, but my grandfather was from Richmond, Virginia. Uh, he was a proud Virginian, and I share that heritage of pride in our commonwealth. Um, my grandfather, my grandfather's father, my great-grandfather, uh, served with Robert E. Lee. And another great-grandfather also served with Robert E. Lee and was, uh, was killed in that service on Cheat Mountain in West Virginia in the early days of the war. Um, my, other, my grandfather's father served with Lee uh, until Appomattox and always revered the general, uh, as did my grandfather. But as a minister in Richmond in the 20s and 30s, my grandfather also uh, called out the KKK and Jim Crow laws as being antithetical both to the Constitution of our country, Constitution of our Commonwealth, and the Constitution of our Church. Uh, all people are saved and restored to dignity by the love of God in Christ. And part of our work of reconciliation is to use our privileges to uh, to make that clear. So my grandfather, though he revered uh, Virginia, though his father had fought for the Confederacy, uh, realized that he could no longer use the symbols and the language of the Confederacy if he was going to pursue the reconciliation that God had enjoined him to pursue in Christ. My grandfather became a lifelong advocate of equal rights and built relationships with black church leaders throughout his ministry. He invited Martin Luther King Jr. to come to uh, his diocese in Ohio and to my home parish in the mid-1960s. And he always uh, worked for ways to use his own language uh, in order to make clear uh, the reconciling love of God in Christ. So in my family, while we honor our heritage, we no longer use the symbols of the Confederacy as a point of honor. 
we recognize the flaws uh, of our ancestors' view of the world. And while we love them, uh, we don't honor in the same way what they honored. Um, and I think that that's part of the work of, uh, of all Christians, uh, to recognize our advantages, our privileges in whatever society in which we live, and to freely, uh, to freely let go of some language, some symbols that may have been important uh, to our ancestors in order to more clearly communicate uh, the love and the desire of God in Christ, which is to lift up all human beings and to free us from the bondage of sin and to restore uh, us into the kingdom of God where all people are loved and welcomed and honored. Uh, so may we each, during our preparation for Easter, uh, confess the ways in which uh, our use of language, our view of history, um, our economic practices have sometimes and may still continue to create inequity and do harm to others in the world around us. And let us do what we can to lay aside those symbols and practices that produce uh, unfairness, inequity, or harm to others. Um, and at the same time, uh, continue to honor our mothers and our fathers, our ancestors, for the ways in which they uh, they did communicate and pass on the truth and the faith to us. Uh, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer. Let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Blessed Savior, at the hour of noon, you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. We remember in our prayers all those who suffer mind, body, and spirit. We pray that God may comfort them and that God may use us to bring comfort, reconciliation, justice, and peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peace be with you. Thank you for joining me for this uh, Lenten reflection and prayer, time of prayer on this Thursday during the fourth week of Lent. And I wish you all a blessed and joyful Easter. Easter.